So if you work, one of the things that's happened in America, and I'm, it's amazing to me to see the lack of self-awareness. Yesterday I said nice stuff about America to start my show, about Josh Allen, and there's a lot of ways to succeed in America. Now I'm going to be critical of a disturbing trend in America. Everybody thinks they're an expert on stuff they've put no time into. Like, I'm not really interested in your COVID opinion. Are you an epidemiologist? Shh, I'm not interested. Are you a climatologist? I'm not interested if you're not. It used to be, I think, in America that if you did something for 20 or 30 years, you know, insurance, landscaping, educator, like that qualifies as close to being an expert, astrologer. It doesn't matter what it is. Like, but for some reason in America now, uh, social media has empowered people to think they know more about technology than Elon Musk from their 1,100 square foot apartment. Um, okay, you know more about business than Mark Cuban. No, but okay. So I've been in television 30 years. I think I know it. I think I'm, I think I'm pretty good at spotting who's faking it on TV, who's authentic, who's real. So I'm not really that fascinated with your opinion on what I'm about to say because I know it's right. I watched Hard Knocks and the Cowboys last night. Mike McCarthy, every time I see him, tries way too hard. He really does. He's, he's like what a football coach would act like in a movie about a football coach. Remember when he was unemployed? He went out of his way. He overcompensated because everybody said he's sort of outdated. Like Aaron Rodgers inferred that he was outdated. So he became Mr. Analytics guy. Oh, uh, uh, analytics. And then he admitted a year later after Jerry Jones hired him. Yeah, I didn't really, that, I didn't watch all the Cowboy games. I really, eh. when I watch Hard Knocks, Dak Prescott is a total alpha. Like Dak Prescott really comes across as, that's a guy I want to be in the foxhole with. Dak Prescott doesn't have a phony bone in his body. Like that kid I would line up next to and go to the ends of the earth for. Mike McCarthy comes off like a 1994 football coach trying to overcompensate. Who was the first big hire he made with the Cowboys? Mike Nolan, defensive coordinator. That is such a 1994 hire. He was completely over his skis. The NFL's gotten really young and really smart with its coaches. Sean McDermott, Matt Rule, Kyle Shanahan, Sean McFay, Joe Judge, Brian Flores. These guys are progressive. They're smart. They're not into cliches. I'm watching Mike McCarthy, all the swearing and all the... He had a moment last night on the HBO show, Hard Knocks. This is stuff you'd be embarrassed to say if you were like a first-year high school football coach. It's like every cliche at a 1988, uh, let's play it, we beeped out obvious parts. Oh, Jesus. Folks, there have been the last six coaches on Hard Knocks, one of them has looked really, really sharp. The one that is really sharp, Sean McVay. You can't fool me on TV. The cliches, the swearing. You go to the last six coaches on Hard Knocks, one guy, you're like, Wow, that guy's energy, that guy's passion. It was Sean McVay. Green Bay is 26 and 6 since McCarthy left. Back to back NFC championships. When he left, nobody called for a year. So he did that corny go downstairs in my basement analytics thing that was so forced, later acknowledging a lot of it was BS. And then a year later, two people offered him a job Cleveland. Doesn't have a track record of great hires, although Kevin Stefanski seems to be really sharp. And the Cowboys. And I said this a couple weeks ago about the Cowboys. They do business like the 80s and 90s. You know, like 13 of their top 14 contracts are guys they drafted. It's not the way the Chiefs do business. It's not the way the Seahawks do business. Baltimore does business. The Bills do business. The Rams do business. Go get the best players. Don't believe you have all the answers. And I'm, I got nothing against Mike McCarthy here. But I've been in this business 30 years, and I watch Sean McVay, and you're like, oh, my God. And you watch Mike McCarthy, and you're like, oh, my God. It's a different OMG. If you're a Cowboy fan, I, I just 
And by the way, it's not an age thing. Andy Reid, sharp as a tack. Sean Payton, Pete Carroll, Belichick. A lot of guys, like, you see them talk. It's totally authentic. I always feel like McCarthy is trying to sell me something. Is He's acting like he thinks a football coach should act. And he's got a Super Bowl, so, you know, he, but, you know, there's some quarterbacks and coaches with Super Bowls that we don't think are great. I don't know. I watched Hard Knocks last night. My, my takeaway is Dak Prescott's the real deal. McCarthy's inauthentic and acting like a football coach. Here's a story that I, I, I don't get. Like, we know this. This Ben Simmons in Philadelphia now, he's not going to show up to training camp. He won't return their calls. There are a lot of times in sports that a team fails a player. And in those instances, I think I'm fair. I support the player. Cleveland, for the first seven years, when you were all burning your jerseys, Cleveland failed LeBron James. They didn't have a second elite player. I mean, God, who, who was the second best player on those teams? Cleveland failed LeBron. He leaves to Miami. They get terrible in an hour. He comes back. He saves them again. LeBron's had every right to leave Cleveland both times. Hey, I love Portland and Dame, but they haven't done a good enough job. They have been sticking with this C.J. McCollum, great guy, by the way, Dame thing for like several years now, and they're the same player, yet they don't have wings. Like Kevin Garnett in Minnesota, he had a right to leave. Like they failed him. Anthony Davis with the Pelicans. I mean, they had Drew Holiday, but they, 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 they didn't do a great job with him. I will always support the player, a young man that comes into the NBA. He's worked his butt off. He's a top pick. He goes to a bad team, and the owner and the executives fail him. But Ben Simmons is out of his mind. He's mad at Philadelphia. <laughs> Time out. Okay. He's the one that can't hit a free throw. Okay, just think about these four or five things. They draft him, and he misses the entire first season. All right, not his fault. And then they give him the max extension, despite the fact he can't shoot and he is a point guard. And then they hire a deal-making general manager and Doc Rivers, a player-friendly coach. Despite rumors, they always support him publicly. Even after a playoff series in which he was a point guard that was terrified to have the ball in his hands, they defend him publicly. And he's mad at them? He's indifferent, it appears, to getting better. He has been coddled and, and babied and promoted and protected and marketed. And he's mad at them? He's going to no-show to training camp? He refuses to take anybody's calls? I mean, come on now. LeBron in Cleveland? Team let him down. KG, T-Wolves, team let him down. Damon Portland, front office, do better. AD to the Pelicans, I got AD's back. This is a Ben Simmons issue. <laughs> I mean, they've surrounded him with, think about this. Jimmy Butler was there. They went and got him Jimmy Butler. He couldn't get along with him. They get Tobias Harris, a Curry, Joel Embiid, a deal-making GM, a totally player-friendly, offensive-minded coach. Um, give me specifics, Ben. I've said this about Aaron Rodgers. If you're upset, Aaron, with the Packers, give me specifics beyond you should have called me with the quarterback when you drafted him. All right, I wouldn't be happy with it, but... That's not the end of the world. Not like Brady got a heads up with Garoppolo. Like if everybody, like there are real victims out there. Okay. All across sports, all across America, all across the world. Ben Simmons is playing the victim. And my takeaway is <laughs> I think Philadelphia is at wit's end. I think they have everything. I mean, they could have got him. I mean, they went and got him the deal making GM in the league. They went and got him maybe the most player-friendly coach. You inherit Joel Embiid. They get you a Curry who can shoot, Tobias Harris, Jimmy Butler, and you won't return their calls? Come on now. Give me a break on this. Philadelphia has every right to be completely over and discouraged with this relationship. Ben Simmons has gotten a much much better roster than KG did in Minnesota, AD did in New Orleans, Dame as in Portland, LeBron arguably twice in Cleveland.
Sometimes we have to admit the team did their job. The player failed. So far, Ben Simmons has been a huge disappointment. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.